this video is for integrated three. This is the chapter 11 D-Day number two. So I'm just going to kind of look and see if I'd rather get rid of my X's, uh, which I could. I've, I could multiply maybe the top one by a negative and add it to the second one. Um, maybe multiply the top one by a negative three, add it to the last one. My Y's, I could undo my Y's um, by multiplying my Y by a two negative two to get rid of the two, negative two on bottom, or a, neg a three to get rid of the three Y on top. Uh, my Zs, I could do also by multiplying maybe one of them by a two, and maybe also by a negative to eliminate the other two situations. It doesn't matter which one. Pick whichever one you prefer. Um, I think I'm gonna eliminate my Zs doesn't matter, it's not one is better than the other. Um, I am going to number these though. So I can just kind of refer to them. I'm just gonna highlight that because that's what I'm focusing on eliminating. So let's say that this is equation one. Let's have this be equation two. And we'll have this one here be equation three. So if I'm gonna use my Z's, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take equation one and I'm going to multiply it by a um, two. So I'm going to multiply this by a two. Let me just, I'm just going to color code, sorry. So um, x plus three y minus z equals negative four. So when I multiply that by a two, and maybe I'm going to do that right underneath this. I get a 2x plus 6y minus 2z is equal to a negative 8. Okay, that's kind of like my new equation one. I'm going to take equation two as is. x minus y plus 2z is equal to 13. I'm going to add those two equations together. And I'm going to get 3x plus 5y. My z's are going to cancel out is equal to five. So this is going to be equation, I'm going to call it four. Um, now I'm going to take equation one again. And this time I'm going to multiply it by a negative one. So x plus three y minus z equals negative four times it by a negative one. So I'm going to get a negative x minus three y plus c equals four. So again, that's gonna be my new equation one. I'm gonna add it with equation three, which is three x minus two y minus c is equal to a negative nine. Add these two equations together. I get a two x minus five y. My z's cancel out negative five. Um, this is going to be equation five. So at this point, those two equations that I just found, the um, 3x plus 5y equal 5 and the 2x minus 5y equal negative 5. That's my new system of the two equations and two, two variables. I call it a two by two. And that's what I'm going to now solve. So I'm just going to move this up. Now, what I notice is if I take equation five, and I add it as is to equation four, 2x minus 5y equals a negative five, my y's are actually gonna cancel out. That just happened to be lucky. Um, I get a 5x, my y's cancel out is equal to zero. I divide by five and I get x is equal to zero. Now I'm not done solving that system. I still need to find my y. So I'm going to do it either into equation four or equation five. I'm leaning, leaning towards uh, equation four, only because it has a positive 5y and the other one's a negative 5y. So I'm going to have three times zero plus 5y equals five. So I basically get 5y equals five. So my y is one. At this point, now that I have, let me just move it so we can see the whole thing. Now that I have my x and my y, I can take those and substitute either into equation one, equation two, or equation three to find my z. 
doesn't matter which one. So let's say I just do it into equation one. And when I say equation one, the equation one I'm talking about is before I times it by anything, okay? So I'm gonna now take these into equation one. So I'm gonna have X, which is zero, plus three times my Y, which is one, minus Z is equal to a negative four. So I'm gonna get three minus Z equals a negative four. Um, I'm going to minus three from both sides and get a negative seven and divide by a negative and I get my Z is seven. So we write this as a point, X first, so zero, Y, one, and Z, seven. On problem two, this one is a parabola. I'm gonna be substituting it into this equation in standard form, Y equal AX squared plus BX plus C. I am going to have three equations, one for each point. So I have a negative one comma three, I'm gonna substitute that in. So I get three is equal to A times negative one squared plus B times negative one plus C. I am going to clean that up. And so when I clean that up, I'm gonna get three is equal to, and this is where you've gotta be careful, negative one squared is a one, a positive one. So I'm gonna get A minus B plus C. Um, equation two, I'm going to use one comma one. So I'm going to have one is equal to a times one squared plus b times one plus c. Clean that up and I'm going to get one is equal to a plus b plus c. Um, equation three, I'm going to use two comma six. So when I am doing this, I'm going to get six is equal to a times two squared plus b times two plus c. So I get six is equal to four a plus two b plus c. Now we can eliminate either a, b, or c. Um, in this case, the Bs would be kind of easy to do just by adding it, so you might wanna do that. Um, usually what I'll do is, um, since we'll always have a plus C plus C, a lot of times I will deal with my Cs first. Um, I think I'm just gonna do that in this case, just kind of keep my normal pattern. But again, you don't have to eliminate your Cs first if you don't want to. So I'm gonna eliminate my Cs. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take equation two and I'm gonna multiply it by a negative one. And when I do, let me just write it out here. One equals A plus B plus C. I'm gonna get negative one is equal to negative A minus B minus C. I'm gonna use that equation with both three and six. So when I take this with equation three, I'm sorry, equation one, um, three is equal to A minus B plus C. I add these together. I get two is equal to, my A's happen to cancel out. Um, I get a negative two B, my C's canceled out. I divide by negative two, I divide by negative two, and I end up with B is equal to negative one. Now, at this point, um, I'm gonna be substituting this into, um, I can substitute them into two of the equations. I think what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna actually um, take equation two, which was one is, negative one, my new equation two that I multiply by a negative. Negative one minus A minus B minus C. And even though I found my B, let me take equation three and add it to my equation two. And what is gonna happen is I'm gonna get five is equal to three A 
less B and my C's cancel out. I'm gonna call this equation four. I can take this and substitute it in here for B and I'm gonna find my A. So I'm gonna go five is equal to A, three A uh, minus one. So I get six is equal to three A. So A is going to be two. Now at this point, I have an A and a B. I'm going to substitute it to any of the equations I want. I am leaning towards doing it into my original equation two, just because I think it's easy math. So I'm taking each of these and I'm plugging it, it into equation two. So I'm gonna have one is equal to A, which is two, plus B, so minus one, plus C. So I get one is equal to one plus C. I subtract one and I get C is equal to zero. So right now, I know that my equation is gonna be Y equal A, which is two, so two X squared, bx, so minus 1x or just minus x. I'm going to write plus zero so we see it, but you really don't need the plus zero. That is going to be your answer. On number three, I'm going to look at my x's which is a three X and X and a five X. Um, that seems pretty reasonable. I can use that middle one with an X and times it by negative three and a negative five to eliminate the other two. But let's just take a look. These are my Y's. That would be a lot more effort. So I don't think I'm gonna do my Y's. My Z's, I have a plus six Z, a minus C and a 13 Z. I could use the middle one and multiply it by a six to eliminate the top and by a, by a 13 to eliminate the bottom. I'm leaning towards my x's. So um, I'm going to have this one be equation one. I'm going to have this one be equation two. And this one be equation three. So I am going to use equation two. And so let me just write, I'm going to eliminate my x. That way I'm focused, OK? So I'm going to use equation two. And I'm going to multiply it by a negative three first, and then I'm going to use uh, equation two, and the next time I'm going to multiply it by a negative five. Okay, so let me just write that I'm going to have x, and I'm just going to move all this stuff over slightly. Okay, so I'm going to have um, x plus 2y minus z equals five. And I'm gonna do the same over here, x plus two y minus z equals five. Okay, so for the first situation, when I multiply by a negative three, I get a negative three x minus six y plus three z is equal to a negative 15. I'm gonna be using that one with equation one, which is a three x minus three y plus six z is equal to six. I'm gonna add these equations together. My x's are eliminated. I get a negative nine y plus nine z is equal to a negative nine. Now this is gonna be equation four. I could divide everything by nine, but let's just see what I get from my um, second situation. Okay, so the second situation, I'm using that same equation, but I'm gonna times it by a negative five. So I'm gonna get a negative five X minus 10 Y plus five Z is equal to a negative 25. So that's my new equation two. Um, I'm gonna use it with equation three, which is a positive five X minus eight Y plus 13 Z is equal to seven. So I'm gonna add those two equations together. Um, I end up with a negative 18y plus 18z is equal to, and when I um, add that up, I get a negative 18. So this is equation five. 
So again, in this first inequality here, I mean equation here, I could divide everything by nine. In the second one, I could divide everything by 18. Um, what I think I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna just uh, deal with the second one and keep the first one as is. And I think I'm gonna divide so that I get nines by a two, but I think I'm gonna do it by a negative two, a negative two, a negative two. Um, so I end up with a positive nine y minus nine z is equal to nine. So I'm gonna have a positive nine y minus nine z is equal to nine. I add those two equations together and what's gonna happen here is my y's cancel out, my z's cancel out. So on this side, I'm gonna get zero. On the other side, let's see what I get. Uh, when those cancel out, I get a zero. So if, if this happens and I ended up with a false statement, I would have no solution. But in this case, I got zero equals zero. So what this means is we're gonna have infinite solutions because um, we're gonna have an intersection that is either a plane or a line. Okay, we haven't learned how to distinguish the difference between those. So for us, we will just say infinite solutions. On number four, we're going to um, write three equations. So equation one, I'm gonna use one comma three. And I'm gonna get three is equal to a times one squared plus b times one plus c. That cleans up to three is equal to a plus b plus c. My second equation, I'm gonna use two comma two. I'm gonna get two is equal to a times two squared plus b times two plus c. So I'm gonna get two is equal to four a plus two b plus c. Um, my third equation, I'm gonna use three comma negative three. So I'm gonna get negative three is equal to a times three squared plus b times three plus c. So I get negative three is equal to nine a plus three b plus c. So I generally will just eliminate my c's since I always have a plus c every time I do these types of problems. And I think I'm gonna take equation three and uh, multiply equation three by a negative one. So let me do that. So I'm not equation three, sorry, equation one. I'm looking at the three in the front, equation one. So I'm gonna have three is equal to a plus b plus c. So I'm gonna get a negative three is equal to a negative a minus b minus c. So again, that's my equation one. I'm gonna use that with both of the other equations. So let me start with equation two. Um, so I'm gonna have two is equal to four a plus two b plus c. When I add these together, I get a negative one is equal to three a plus b. So that's gonna be equation four. I am gonna take this equation one that I multiply by a negative. So negative three is equal to negative a minus b minus c. And I'm gonna add it with equation three which is a negative three is equal to nine A plus three B plus C. So when I add these together, I end up with, with negative six, I apologize, is equal to eight A plus two B. That's gonna be my equation five. Now I'm looking at these two equations. This is gonna be my system that I'm gonna be solving. Okay, so this and this with A's and B's. 
Um, I notice that I can divide my second equation by a two, but I'm leaning towards dividing everything by a negative two. Um, because when I do that, I'm gonna get a three here. I'm gonna get a negative four A here. And this is why I did it. Because here I'm gonna get a negative B. And the other one was a positive B. Okay, so that's why I did it. So now I'm gonna take these two equations and I'm just gonna add them up. So I'm just gonna take uh, this one, put it right here and add it. And so I'm gonna get three is equal to negative four A minus B. I add these equations. I get two is equal to negative A. So negative two is equal to A. I'm not done with that system, okay? I'm still doing that system. So I'm going to plug this, um, I'm thinking into equation four. So I'm gonna go negative one is equal to three times negative two plus B. Um, so I get negative one is equal to negative six plus B. I am going to add six, so I get five is equal to B. So now that I have A and B, um, I think I'm gonna come up here to the original equation one and use that one, okay? I think I'm gonna use that one to find my C. So I'm gonna have three is equal to A, which is negative two, plus B, which is five, plus C. So I get three is equal to three plus C. So I end up with C being zero. So when I work this, write this out for my answer, I'm gonna have Y is equal to A, which is negative two, X squared, plus five X, plus zero, but I don't need the plus zero. And that is our equation. On um, number five, um, this is a division problem. We have to factor our numerators and denominators. Okay, so when I'm factoring this, um, this x plus three is going to remain as is. On the bottom, we're going to get an x plus four times an x minus three um, divided by, and then x squared minus nine factors to an x plus three, x minus three. That is a difference of two squares. And then our denominator, x squared plus seven, x plus 12 factors to an x plus four, x plus three. Now, um, restrictions, we cannot have x be a negative four, a three or a, pause, a, a negative three, sorry. Um, that would make any of our denominators a zero. When I am dividing, um, I am going to change it to multiplying by the reciprocal. That fraction, the one I'm dividing by is the one I'm gonna flip. So I'm gonna get an X plus three over X plus four, X minus three, that does not change times, and then I'm flipping the x plus four times x plus three, that's gonna go on top. And the x plus three times x minus three is gonna go on bottom. Now I would look for more restrictions, but um, this would be a negative three, which I already have, and this would be a three, so my restrictions are good. Um, now for this, um, I'm going to be trying to um, simplify. So let's see, I have an x plus three on top and an x plus three on bottom. I have an x plus four on top and bottom. And then in this situation, um, I have an x minus three, x minus three that's on bottom, um, both of them. So that cannot be simplified. I have another x plus three on top. So my final answer is gonna be x plus three over x minus three times x minus three or x minus three squared. On number six, 
for this one, I need to get common denominators. So when I'm looking at this, I need to factor that denominator. The other denominator um, is not going to be factored any further. So I have a negative 3x over x plus 4, x minus 4. That's my first fraction. Um, minus, and so I'm going to do it as plus a negative, and then on this side I have an x plus 4. Now, um, what's going to happen is I need to get a common denominator, so I'm just going to copy this um, and put that right here. And what I'm going to need to do is come up with a common denominator here. And so for my common denominator, I am going to need this x plus 4, x minus 4. So let's get an x plus 4, x minus 4. So that whole denominator is taken care of. Now, when I'm looking at this denominator, I need an x plus 4. I already have it. Don't need another one. So that's going to be my common denominator. Now, for the first fraction, this one right here, um, I don't have to multiply top and bottom to get a common denominator because it is the same denominator as this. So that's good to know. This one, however, has the x plus 4, but is missing the x minus 4. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x minus 4 to get the common denominator. So now on top, I am going to have the negative 3x from my first fraction. And then I have um, plus a negative 2. And that negative 2 is going to distribute with my x minus 4. And let me clean that up. That's going to be a negative 3x. I'm going to distribute the negative 2. So negative 2x plus 8 over x plus 4, x minus 4. And then I can combine like terms and get a negative 5x plus 8 over x plus 4 times x minus 4. Um, cannot simplify it any further. Cannot factor the top. That is going to be my answer. Um, number 7 is review of an arithmetic sequence. And so when we have an arithmetic sequence, um, a sub n is equal to um, whatever term we're going to start with. Let's say we're going to start with the first term, okay? Then I would add d times n minus 1. Now, in this case, I don't know the first term. I know the fourth term. So instead of starting with the first term and subtracting n minus 1, I'm going to start with the uh, fourth term. So I'm going to have a sub n is equal to 82 plus d, and this is going to be n minus 4 because that's the fourth term. Then I'm going to put in this for my um, n and my a sub n. So my a sub n is, is going to be my 15th term. Okay, so I'm finding a sub 15. And a sub 15 is 16 is equal to 82 plus d. And then I'm going to put in my 15 minus 4. So I get 16 is equal to 82 plus, And then this is going to end up being an 11d. I'm going to minus 82 from both sides. And when I minus 82, I'm going to end up with negative, negative 66 on this side is equal to 11d. I'm going to divide by 11, and I get d is equal to negative 6. So we're subtracting 6. Now, they want us to find the first term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. And I'm going to substitute it into this equation that I wrote. So I'm going to have a sub n is equal to 82, which is my fourth term, plus d. But my d is a minus 6. I'm going to go minus 6. 
times n minus 4. And if I want my first term, I'm going to put a 1 in here. So I'm going to have 82 minus 6 times 1 minus 4. And when I put that into my calculator, um, 82 minus 6 times a negative 3, I end up with 100 as the first term. On number eight, uh, this is a division problem. We're going to divide by an x plus two. You could do long division, but I'm going to do synthetic division. And so if we're dividing by an x plus two, I ask myself, well, what makes that zero? A negative two makes that zero. So that's what I'm going to have that I'm going to use my synthetic division with. I'm going to write my coefficients four, which is my x to the fifth, minus six, which is my x to the fourth. I don't have an x to the third. I don't have an x squared. Then I have my x. Then I have my constant. So you want to make sure that you put zero saving places, okay, as a placeholder. I bring down my four. Then I'm going to take four times negative two, which is a negative eight. I combine that, I get a negative 14. I have negative 14 times negative two, which is a 28. Um, I have 28 times a negative 2, which is going to be a negative 56. So I bring down a negative 56. I have a negative 56 um, times 2, which is going to be a 112 positive. So I'm going to get a 121. And 121 times a negative 2, I end up with a negative. 242, which ends up giving me a negative um, 254. Okay, and so for this, um, I am going to end up with 4x to the fourth minus 14x to the third plus 28x squared minus 56x plus 121, and then this is my remainder. So it's going to be minus, because that's a negative, 254 over x plus 2, because that's what I divided by. On number 7, we want to expand this. So we are going to do um, Pascal's triangle. So I'm going to start with a 1, and I'm going to look for the row that is a 1, 5. So 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. That's the row I want. So now I'm going to have 1 times 2x squared raised to the power of 5 plus 5 times 2x squared raised to the power of 4. Let me move that over a little bit. Okay. Um, raised to the power of 4 times negative 3 raised to the power of 1 plus 10 times 2x squared raised to the power 3 and negative 3 raised to the power 2 plus 10 times um, 2x squared raised to the power 2, negative 3 raised to the power 3 um, plus 5 times 2x squared raised to the power 1 negative 3 to the power 4. And then my last one is going to be plus 1 times negative 3 raised to the power 5. Now I'm going to do this math. So 2 to the fifth in the first one. Okay, so I'm focused right now on this one right here. So 2 to the fifth is 32. And then x squared raised to the power of 5, power to power I multiply. So I'm going to get a 32 um, x to the 10th there. Um, now on the next 
part. Um, let me get a calculator. So I am going to now be um, doing this portion right here. Okay, that's the portion I'm going to be doing. And so when I put that in my calculator, I'm going to have five times two raised to the power of four times a negative three raised to the power of one, but I don't need to put the power of one. So I get a minus 240. And then I have x squared raised to the power of four, power to power I multiply, I get an eight. Okay. And just to make sure you understand, I actually multiplied all of that. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this one right here. So I'm gonna take 10 times two raise the power three times a negative three. Um, sorry, the, yeah, negative three squared. And I'm gonna get a 720. So I get a plus um, 720. And then x squared to the power of three, power to power multiply, get x to the six. Um, for the next one, um, let's say I'm doing that in this blue. Okay, this is the next one I'm going to be working with. Um, I am going to take 10 times 2 squared. Whoops, try again. 10 times 2 squared um, times a negative 3 raised to the power of three, and I get a negative 1,080. My x squared raised to the power of two, power to the power of multiply, I get a four. Uh, next one, let's say I'm gonna be doing um, this. Okay. Um, so for that, I am going to have five times two raised to the power of one times negative three raised to the power of four, and I end up with a positive um, 810x squared. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is my negative three raised to the power of five, and I get a minus 243, and that is our answer. Okay. For the next section, um, we're going to be graphing this sign. And um, for the amplitude, the amplitude for this is three. Uh, my vertical shift, I don't have anything here that I'm adding or subtracting. So um, none. My period is going to be affected by the eight. So that is two pi over B and B is eight. So I'm going to end up with pi force. Uh, my phase shift is what makes this zero. And that is going to be a positive three pi sixteenths. Now, when I'm trying to, that's where I'm going to start my graph. Okay, so I'm going to take that three pi sixteenths, which is where I'm going to start. And then I'm going to add my period which is pi force. Now I'm going to multiply top and bottom of that by four to get sixteenths. So that becomes four sixteenths. And then that I'm gonna to add to see where I end my, my um, cycle. So that's gonna end up giving me a seven pi sixteenths. So for this, um, let me get my graph going. Um, I'm only maybe on the positive x side here. Um, we are centered at zero. So that is where my um, vertical shift is. My vertical shift is there. Um, then I am going to be going three up. So I'm going to be going three up and I'm going to be going three down. Um, that's going to be my high and low. So my highs are going to be at three. My lows are going to be at negative three. 
Then I'm going to be starting at 3 pi sixteenths. So that's my first point, second, third, fourth, fifth is going to end at 7 pi sixteenths because that's pi force away. This is a sine, my sine graph. I am going to um, start at my zero, end at my zero, halfway in between is my zero. Since this is a positive sign, I'm going to go up and then down. And let me connect this with a curve. And there is my graph. And that's the end of this video.